Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here, and this week we're again back to the layout. We're going to do some operations on the layout, showing some of the features that we've talked about in our Tsunami 2 and our Blue Nami in many videos past. Now today we're actually going to talk about braking, and we're going to show you uses of the independent and the automatic tr uh, train brake on the layout and scenarios on where you would use each. So let's get started. Now in the past, we've done several videos explaining how to set up these particular features and you can see those linked in the description down below. But the question always is, is that you can set it up, but what exactly is the purpose or how do you use these particular features? And how do we use the braking? So again, we're back here at the layout and we're gonna take some operation videos and we're gonna show you some scenarios of where the independent brake would be used versus the automatic. And we're going to use a combination of Tsunami 2 and Blue Nami because on my layout here at home, I have some of both on the layout. Now, as we've done a video in the past, the GP15s are Blue Nami and pretty much all the other one locomotives are still Tsunami 2 as I'm working towards getting them upgraded. So we're going to go ahead and do some switching. We're going to build a train. We're going to head it out of town. And then we're going to do some switching in the industry. And we're going to kind of show you some use of all the different types of braking systems. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera around to get better view of the equipment, set up some trains, and uh, get some cars ready to move. And then we're going to move a train around the layout. So here we go. Okay, so we're here in the yard. And we've got our switcher unit out. And our switcher is going to go pick up this car. And it's going to put it on the other train. And then we're going to bring around the 1575, which is the GP15, and we're going to go ahead and build our train. So with this locomotive, we're going to go ahead and move forward. We're going to pick up this hopper car. So we're going to move forward. And with our brake set, we're going to go ahead and increase the throttle. You hear it throttle up. And then we're going to release the brakes and you hear the dynamic exhaust kick in as the engine now is up to speed. We're gonna go ahead and cut our throttle back to about five and we're gonna use the brake application and right now we're in independent. So you're gonna see that we were using the brakes. Now we feathered the brakes back and forth. Now when we change direction, we got to prove that we're coupled, so we're going to move in speed step one, release the brakes, and we can see that we are coupled. So now they would, the conductor or the brakeman would be releasing the handbrake on the car. So now we're going to say we're done, now let's go ahead and put this car on the train. So we're going to go ahead and move in reverse. Now you can hear that the dynamic exhaust has taken the exhaust and read it and dropped it down because we're just coasting with a single car. We're going to cut the throttle and set the brakes. So now we're in front of the turnout. So we're going to have uh, Earl come over here and he's going to throw our turnout for us. And change directions. And then we're going to go ahead and release the brakes. Now as we get closer, we can cut the throttle a little bit. But we can use our F11 brakes to toggle on and off. So now, let's check to see that we're coupled. We're going to go ahead and be in reverse. We're going to release our brakes. And it looks like we've got the train. So now we're going to uncouple. And 
and then we're going to go ahead and pull away. Now this is one of the examples of using the independent brakes because the locomotive is light or it's just stop switching single cars around. We're going to go ahead and cut our throttle and use our brakes. Now we're going to throw our turn out again and then we're going to get out of the way. So now we can cut the throttle, we're on another track, and we can set the brakes, and we'll bring the locomotive to a stop. So that's just one example of switching a locomotive around using the independent brakes. Now for the next example, we're going to go ahead and grab our Blue Nami. Now this is in Loco 1575. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Blue Nami app. Okay, so now on my screen you can see I'm located I'm lo connecting to locomotive 1575. Well, we're apparently connected to 1587 too, but we don't need that. Now I'm connected to 1575, we're going to go over to standard. Now this is the first time today that I've opened the app, so it's going to do a quick read of all the CVs. So we're set and ready to go, so we have to start it up. So first we have to hit the RPM plus. Okay, so now we're fired up. We're going to go ahead and back out of the out of the engine lead. And we're going to go tie on to the train. We pass our switch, we're going to hit our brakes. Now we're going to throw our turnout. Now we're going to move into our train. Now again, we can use our brakes. As you can see here, I've remapped things as we've talked about. So we can use our brakes, which is on the F8. And we can feather them on and off. To gently couple onto the train. Now let's check to make sure we're coupled. So we're going to change directions. This is where we're going to just pull up at speed step one and release to make sure we're coupled. And we are. So now we're tied into the train. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select our brake. Now right now on function 12 there you can see that brake select is set to independent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that on. And now you're going to hear the train change over to the automatic or the train brake system. Now as an added measure, measure because we're going to be moving long hood forward, we want this to be a uh, extra in 1978. So we've got our rear class lights on. And we're doing our brake check.
Okay, now the train line is fully charged and we're ready to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull out of the yard. So now in this particular case, this side of the train would be considered the front. So we have to be cognizant of that when we're blowing our whistle signals. Then we're gonna throttle up. We're gonna release our brakes and now you're hearing a different sound. Just like, for example, here when I set the brakes now closer to the camera. You're going to hear a different sound when the locomotive is coming to a stop. So, when we're, same thing when I'm running. We're going to release our brakes and we're going to head out. Because we had to get our information from Carl there. And we're ready to go. So now as we're approaching our switching area, we're going to go ahead and bring the train slower. And then we can set our brakes. And again, you'll hear that we're in train brake mode. So when I set the brakes, you'll actually hear the air sound. But we could, well, we're stopped a little short of what we wanted, so we can go ahead and increase the throttle. Release. And then we can set our brakes again. And now we're set. So next we're going to show you one other example of using the independent brake when you're operating your trains doing industrial switching. So let me move the camera and we'll get right back to it. Okay, as you can see here now, our Jeep 15 is in front of Benford Tools. Now, because it has been separated from the rest of the train, we are in independent train brake mode, as you can see here on the throttle. I am gonna go ahead and pick up these cars. So now I'm gonna move in the forward direction. Now, in this particular case, it's independent, so we can mark as front being the front of the locomotive, or given the fact that this was the rear of the locomotive coming in, you could still dictate that really check your railroad and check your practices you can do whichever but i'm going to go ahead and say that this is my front now so so i'm going to start moving in the forward direction and release my brakes now i'm going to leave my bell on because that way if there's any employees or any anything else that's not railroad personnel that way they can hear the um, the bell and hopefully know that the locomotive's coming in. But again, we can feather our brakes, so we're not going very fast. But we want to make sure that we're coupled. Now in this case, we did not couple, so we can back out. And we can come back at it, and we can hit the cars a little harder. Now let's go in there a little faster and see if we can get the coupler to cake. There we go. Now we've got those coupled. Now let's prove that we're coupled. And it looks like we're proved that we're coupled. So this is just another example of how you can use the independent brakes when you're switching your cars and picking up cars at industry. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull out. And apparently today we're only gonna pick up the one. But you get the general idea of what we're going for here. So we're past this, let's cut our brakes, and then we can throw our turnout. Change directions. And then we can start moving.
and we can lift our car and take it back and then we'll bring one of these other box cars into the empty siding now. So guys, I hope this has been a helpful look at a way that you can use your Tsunami 2 or your Blue Nami, again, on the same layout, and use the brakes, use the brake features, the things that we built into the decoder so that you can use your trains and run your trains more realistically and more prototypically, and that way your little HO scale figures are going to be safe and sound. So guys, that's it for this week. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and be sure to like the, and uh, comment below if you have any questions or would like to see more of these operational videos. Just let us know what your thoughts are and we'll be happy to help any way we can. And if you do have any questions, need any help on setup or anything like that, contact us at support at soundtracks.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.